let me just cut to the chase, ma'am. Uh, you can feel like what you want to, but women like you die alone. Straight up. Because you think you're better than the men that you qualify for. And the only reason, honestly, ma'am, that I can see a woman like yourself really thinking you deserve more is because you earn more because you earn more money than most people around you in North Carolina. So the girls say that we need this video and quite frankly, I agree. So we're back. And before I get started, I just want to go ahead and round up all the baddies. I want to make sure that the baddies are tuned in because we got some good stuff to talk about today and I need to make sure that the baddies are front and center for what I got to say. You see, a lot of black women are currently dealing with the baddie. I don't know why, but they are. I see it all the time. And I think that the whole notion of masculinity has become so warped, so much so that women are now confused as to what baddie DNA really looks like. Just because a man looks masculine on the outside does not mean that he is not a baddie. I'm going to say that again. Just because a man looks masculine on the outside does not mean that he is not a baddie. We got to stop confusing nice bodies, tattoos, money, street cred, status, and woofing on the internet as equating to masculinity. These things do not equate to masculinity. And it is so bad out here in these screes that the baddies are now camouflaging in with the heterosexual masculine men that truly desire and love women, which is exactly why I say that women cannot be desperate when dating. You see, character in a man is what truly defines his masculinity. Character will always separate the baddies from the real men, the men that truly desire femininity, the men that recognize a woman's value, a woman's worth, and the men that are not asking women what do they bring to the table. You see, we are currently experiencing a baddie epidemic, a widespread infectious disease that is happening right within our communities, a disease of black men thinking that they are the prize, a disease of feminine black men, and a disease of black men who are now in competition with the women. And these diseases are not only giving men a false sense of confidence, but it has also undoubtedly poisoned the dating pool in which many black women are looking to date out of and find quality men from. You see, a disease is a disorder. It's a disruption of the structure or function in a human. And the new baddies are a disease. The new baddies are a disorder. So let's get into it because we really need to address this issue and call it to the table as it should be. Now, in order to be able to recognize a baddie, to be able to point a baddie out, we need to understand why they are the way that they are. We have to understand the signs of baddies so that we can have the upper hand and being able to spot them out in passing, in conversations, and in dating, and in effort to avoid them like a plague. Again, just because a man looks masculine on the outside does not mean that he is not a baddie. This is why we vet men. A man's outward and physical appearance, a man's vigor, a man's strength does not truly speak to his masculinity and whether or not he has the qualities and more importantly, the character to be a man that is worthy of our companionship. The foundation of baddie behavior is rooted in insecurity and misogyny. And despite the fact that many of these men are in relationships, they are incapable of truly valuing a woman because they do not know how it feels to be valuable themselves. And since the bad has got so much to say and so much mouth these days, let's go ahead and break down five qualities that make the DNA of many of them. This is the stuff that they don't want to talk about here on this worldwide internet. It's not just about being able to point it out. We need to know the why. Let's get into some more free game. Number one. Low testosterone. Yes, you heard me correct. Testosterone is the life of a man. And since the number one reason why we are on this earth is to reproduce, testosterone plays a huge role. It's the foundation of a man's reproduction source and it fuels his sexual health and drive. It's his get up and go, his dopamine, his overall motivation to get out into the world and to produce, fueled by good looking women, of course. And many men today, young and old, are currently a experiencing low testosterone levels due to the toxic world that we live in caused by the high stress levels, the foods that we eat, our water sources, the plastics, the deodorants, you name it. They are all contributing. Low testosterone is a chemical imbalance, which leads many men to become more reactive, more emotional, more violent, and more sensitive than your average man. Low testosterone is a silent blow to a man's ego. It is a hormonal imbalance, which leads to their bad behaviors. Number two, 
Absent fathers. Many baddies in the black community are often the result of absent fathers. You see, a father's role in a man's life is irreplaceable. Only a man, a black man, can truly relate to the growing pains and heartaches of another black man in this cruel world that we live in. This is one of the beauties of having an active father figure in a man's life. Fathers bring discipline, inflexibility, and the sternness that young men would not normally receive from their nurturing mothers. A father's presence, a father's role in growing a man is vital. It's a must. It's without a doubt one of the make or break situations that oftentimes will mold a man into a baddie. Many baddies grew up in households void of masculine energy and have never witnessed healthy examples of conflict resolution from men that look exactly like them. In return, these men have now become husbands and fathers of a new generation of black men without a true guidebook for their own lives and how to treat their wives, especially other women around them. Some of the hardest men known to the streets have misplaced emotions and do not properly know how to respond and to react to others around them due to their own battles with self-identity as a result of having no father in their life. You will often see that the misplaced anger of the baddie collective is often rooted in their pain due to not having a man to set a proper example for them. Number three, the black man demand. There is no question that black men are currently in high demand. And since we live in an overtly sexual world, they are often fetishized for various reasons. Their melanin, their stature, their physical capabilities, especially in sports, their musical talents, and the very often rumored difference in penis size. And this hypersexualized era has made the black man become the token of all races. You see, one of the reasons why I feel like this new generation of black men hate black women is because black women do not jump through hoops for them as other races of women do because we have no need to fetishize the very men that we come from. We are used to the divine purpose of melanin because we live it daily. We know that it can produce the greatest of the great. And since other races of women cannot relate, the melanin fetish is often misinterpreted for authenticity and interest, which feeds into a baddie's ego, making them quick to announce that black women are difficult and hard to deal with. You see, present day, black men are quite often deitized and placed on pedestals for frankly nothing, no true substance, no having, no effort, no putting in real work, just fluff and looks. And they know this. And since these same black men are now the relationship experts without the expert, they have set the precedent that black women should accept their bare minimal offerings because they believe that black man demand means that they are the prize. And this is very weird to me, like very, because I never thought we actually see the day where black men actually wanted to be the prize. Where the men want to be the hunties, where the men want to be the prey, to be chosen, conquered, and won. And if this ain't feminine energy, if this ain't big baddie energy, I don't know what is. It's truly a sad state of affairs out here in that we have normalized men wanting to be the women. Number four, pornography addiction. Porn is one of the top reasons why a lot of baddies are not on top of their game when dealing with women. This is a taboo topic and it is not often talked about. Many baddies have porn addictions and are mentally on vacation from their partners and are absent from the day-to-day -day emotional investments that are required to grow a healthy relationship. In men, prolactin affects sperm production. Every time a man ejaculates, he releases prolactin. When men constantly release prolactin, acting through the view of pornography, they become machine-like, automated, and emotionally detached. This prevents them from being able to be connected to a woman, like truly connected to a woman. And in the current matrix of social media, in a world where sex is everything is sex driven, these men are unable to cultivate relationships with women from a place that is non-sexual. Many baddies view women as objects rather than real breathing human beings and they are void of empathy for women because they truly have nothing to offer them outside of sex. And number five, ICN, insecurity, 
competition and narcissism. These th three things run deep within the veins of the baddie collective. You see, baddies prove that competition is not just reduced to women versus women. It is also baddies versus women. You'd be surprised how many women are currently dating men who are secretly in competition with them. And I've noticed that the more black women that dominate the educational and entrepreneurial arenas, the more that the baddies feel threatened. Instead of using that same energy, to get out here and get on their purpose. After all, men have an economic advantage over women. What women have to get clear about is that education and money does not attract a real man. It's a plus, a bonus, but it is not the core of what masculinity seeks from the feminine. And only narcissists and insecure men sleep with women while secretly hating them and being in competition with them. Which is again why I continue to say how vetting a man's character is of the utmost importance. We gotta take our time because baddies and real men look the same on the outside. It's the inside that truly matters. Listen to me very closely. Baddies like Clifford Harris and Kevin Samuels are the last men that black women should be looking for for any type of advice. Okay, A baddie could never give a woman who is healed and confident in who she is and knows herself advice as to what real masculine energy is seeking because they would not know. They are not the same. The DNA of a baddie is totally different than the DNA of a real man. Okay, And if any woman is putting up with a baddie, she is only revealing that she has much more healing to do because relationships with baddies are never ending spirals of confusion and these men are energy drainers. At their core, they do not even know who they are. Energy is real and energy transfer is even more real. We are building on a much needed vetting video and I want to get to the bottom of why women are attracted to men like Future and not men like Russell Wilson. Ladies, it is important to understand that a man who has lost himself cannot guide you, which is why it is imperative that you find yourself first. Until next time.